Hi, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. And today I'm filming a video about my goals for 2020. So it's uh, New Year's Day today and I'm not sure when this is going to go up because, um, as I've said before, my internet is stupidly slow. So it may take a couple of days for this to appear live. But anyhow, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk about my bigish goals first and then if that sort of evolves into general goals then fine we'll just uh, see how it goes. I have made a list of some goals. Um, so I've already done my video on my goals for last year and how I did on those. So you can um, easily find that if you wish to watch it. So my goal for last year was to read 50 books and I read 50 seven or 58 now um and so my goal for that my obvious goal for this year was 60 to see if I can just inch up a little bit higher um it's a hard thing having like a total target because I like it because I like targets but also sometimes it pits me off reading books which are, are longer because I don't want to um spend like three weeks reading a long book and then have to read loads of like books quickly after to make up the time so equally I don't want it to spoil my year of reading I just want to like be chilled about it so if I only read 40 books fine if I end up reading 75 then awesome we'll just see so I bought the second goal is to um to read more books that I've had for years so I bought a hell of a lot of books last year like virtually all second hand but I bought tons and tons and I am really excited with the collection that I've got now and I really just want to read it so I want to read more books that I've had that I've got on my backlist but also especially ones that I've had for ages because um you know I bought them for a reason and I still want to read them and I just need to stop picking them off and get on with it and I want to limit my book buying so often I'll just kind of be like well these books are really cheap and I've heard of that one so I'll buy it and stuff but do I really want to get to it maybe maybe not so I want to try and limit my book buying to one a week, which I think is still, you know, reasonable, 50 books in the year. Um, and hopefully that will mean that I'm a bit more selective. Like yesterday I went into a secondhand bookshop and I actually put a book back and I didn't buy anything because the books that I was interested in weren't books that I was like, oh yeah, yeah I really want to read that. I was just interested in them. So I didn't buy them. So I thought I did well there. Um, so sort of tied in again with that is about the amount of books I want to read for my backlist so I decided that I want to read at least 60% of my books I wanted to be off my backlist so the times I tend to not do that is library books and um, audible books and also um, things like if I you know if I have vouchers or like I've got some I've got a Waterstones voucher that I want to use for Christmas and um, so I might go in to buy some books today with that and um, so those kind of books obviously I still want to be able to to read but I would like to read more off my backlist so I feel, even though that's four goals they, they seem sort of all interlinked with each other those ones um then the next one I never really took part in readathons before because I mean I did things like non-fiction November before but I never actually used the prompts so I just used it as an, as an excuse to read non-fiction last year I tried to do the reading women challenge but I did it very half-heartedly so I sort of like read what I wanted to read and then looked back and thought can I fulfill any of the prompts whereas this year my friend Hannah said to me like shall we do this challenge together and I was like yes let's do this challenge together and so I like made a, a, a like a A4 piece of paper I divided it up into squares wrote the prompt down for each square so I can like keep track of what I'm doing, write the books down in the square as I read them and then we're going to discuss like our choices for each square so that'll be really fun. So that will definitely keep me on track doing it with someone else as well. I'm really looking forward to starting that. And I also wanted to do some um, actual readathons. So last year I wished that I'd done the Newts and the Owls um, one because it looked so fun. And I love when people do readathons and vlog them. So um Heather from Soggy Expat Book Nerd, she does loads of readathons and vlogs and they're like my favourite videos to watch. I love watching her do them. And also um Emma from Drinking by My Shelf. Um she does brilliant vlogs of readathons as well and I really um I'll link both their channels. I really um enjoy watching those. And I want to do more of those. So um I've 
found out ways that I can find out about readathons in advance and I am keeping a watch out for ones that I wanted to do um, and then um, yeah so I'm gonna do, the, do them, vlog them and not, I'm not gonna like overwhelm myself with them if I do like two or three a year that would be fine um, but yeah I'm, I'm really excited to do those because um, I love doing something like in a communal spirit way and also to like it's sort of when you know you've got a, a target and deadlines and stuff then it helps you sort of focus on the reading and um yeah so yeah i'm looking forward to doing that last year i set myself a target of some authors whose work i had multiple copies of and i wanted to um to read to try those authors for the first time so last year my targets were sarah moss sarah waters and maggie o'farrell and i only read sarah waters of those um, but I loved her. And this year I've set myself four authors <coughs> who I'd like to read, who I haven't read before, but I have lots of copies, lots of different books. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've carried Sarah Moss over from last year. Paolo Coelho is another one. So I have three of his books and I've read none of them. Um, but I've heard him on Super Soul Sessions and I really want to read his books because um, he sounds like my cup of tea, definitely. The next one is a bit embarrassing that I've never read her before because I feel like everyone in the universe has read her books apart from me and I've got four of them. Uh, one, two, three, three of them. You can see them on my shelf. And that's Sadie Smith. So I feel like she's a national treasure and um, I feel really stupid that I haven't read any Sadie Smith but that's definitely um, a priority this year to read her. And Helen Dunmore. So um, I have three, I think maybe four. Let me see. Can I see her? One, two... Three. I have three Helen Dunmore books on my shelf and people who I respect their opinions um, and I know who have the similar reading taste to me really like her so um, I'm looking forward to reading her as well. So hopefully at least the, the, the three women of that um, group I'll be able to use for my reading women challenge, fingers crossed. So in terms of like types of books that I want to read, um, I want to read more books that will benefit me more so like I want to read more spiritual books like some people call them self-help books but for me like the type of self-help book I like is spiritual books um so I want to read more of those books I have tons of them and um I get so much out of them sometimes like sometimes they feel a little bit intense if I'm um which is the opposite really because sometimes when I'm really just sort of like struggling with overwhelm being really busy and stuff um then I want to read something escapist and light or something like a romance something that really takes me out of my situation um but actually what I really probably need to do is to also read um the books that I know will bring me back to my stillness and my center and my journey and my um sort of um life's work and that's really the kind of book that I should pick up more of um, and they're not quick reads because you have to read them you want to take your time with them you want to take your time I always annotate those books as well I put in little tabs so I can go back to them sometimes I journal about them so they're not books that I just zoom through and again that comes back to like targets and goals and how that can actually be a detriment to you um, I was watching like Lucy the Reader's goals and she her goal is to read one book <laughs> a year because she reads tons of books but she doesn't have the pressure then she's like achieved that within five minutes of the year starting and she doesn't have to have any pressure so yeah I need to be more easy about the targets um so yeah so I want to read more spiritual books and I love memoirs and I didn't realize until I organized my books by genre which they are now I have so many memoirs um like a whole like two shelves of memoirs um and I really love them I love learning I love hearing about other people's lives and about what they did and what they learned and everything and um so um I really want to read more memoir and yeah more non-fiction I didn't read as much non-fiction last year so I, I, I love learning and um, whatever that's learning about I really love learning and I have tons of non-fiction and I want to get to more of that as well so that's one of my genre goals um another goal that I have is to meet some of my book cheap friends in real life uh so I have um so I feel, I feel like my booktube friends are in kind of two groups. So 
one group is my the people who I kind of comment on the videos and I really I love them and watch them and um they feel like my friends but we don't have like that much interaction and um they kind of tend to be the bigger booktubers with like several thousand followers and like I think of them as a friend but actually they probably don't know who I am <laughs> and so like they're not actually my friends but if I went to a booktuber meetup, then um, I'm sure they, um, I'm sure we would become friends. And then there's a, like another group of booktubers who are, I guess, similar um, size to myself, and um, we interact a lot more. And um, I kind of would really love to meet up with those people in real life. Um, I think they all know who they are, so I don't need to like name names. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd really love to um, try and meet up with some booktubers this year um because some of them are like definitely friends we chat um and they bring so much happiness to my life like booktube has been so, so good like i owe simon savage a big debt for um bringing me to booktube and telling me to start a channel and um helping me do that and um yeah it's been so so lovely like to actually have people i could talk to about books he get it uh, i could never talk to anyone about books before um he well that's not true i could talk to my mum about books and my best friend nicola but not very many people and not many people here are kind of as nerdy and obsessed as i am oh i think i have a child approaching what's that yeah i just have to mend a poly pocket one second <laughs> uh Welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, they've brought so much happiness to my life and sometimes when I'm just like, not feeling great, putting BookTube on is just what I need and I love all the people who I've made friends with on here. Um, and then the last goal for books is to reread some favourites. So when I look back at my like favourite books of all time shelf on Goodreads, for instance, or I go back to books that, um, when I'm doing like a tag or something and I'm talking about books I've read I think oh my god I love this book like I'd love to reread this book or I'd love to re-listen to this book and um hold on a second what do you need put them together <laughs> um Mom, there go. Video. no oh. um lost train of thought um yeah so um rereading would be cool i'd like to do that as well and i don't it's easy to to not reread stuff because you think well there's loads of new books out there that i haven't read before but actually like rereading old favorites is really cool and um one of them in particular that i want to reread this year is um life after life by kate atkinson because i haven't read a god in ruins yet and i'd like to read life after life again first or listen to it on audio because i have the audible of it as well so that's one of them i'd like to do so that's kind of my book goals, just going to put my little list down. Um, life goals, well, so I'll just go broad here, but over Christmas, so I've had quite a lot of time off work over Christmas, my husband's been off work for the whole of Christmas, and obviously we've had no school, we've had no swimming classes, we've had no golf lessons, we've had nothing like that. And it's just been like so relaxing and so, so nice not to be constantly rushing around and the kids have been happier because we haven't just been like, we've got to go to this place, we've got to go to this place, we've got to go to this class and like just slowing down. That's one of my goals, definitely, because it's been so fun spending all this time together, not having to go to like the stuff I mentioned. Obviously, we still have to go to work, we still have to get the kids to school, we still have to get to nursery in the morning, we still have to do school pickup, we still have work, like we still have all those things. But I guess it's just like appreciating time where we just do nothing and we all be together more. So that's like definitely a goal. Um, I want to kind of make my work situation work better for me this year. So I've made lots of videos before about how I feel about work and how it work, work doesn't work for me very well as it, as it is currently. And I want to try and get on top of that situation, make some changes. I make, you know, made some. I made some changes um over the past couple of years i've met some cool people making the changes and i dropped um half a day a week um last year and so i want to like make some more changes to try and align my values and my um happiness more with work um or should i say the other way around align work more with my values and my happiness 
and what else um i did make a list in my journal because i always write a new year's new year's entry every year um i want to do some more creative stuff so like i got some more some craft stuff for christmas i love doing craft and um i got like some yarns i got some a cross stitch kit and um i really need to do some more painting so i finished my um drawing that i did of a wolf last year and i did that in pastel pencil and i'm really proud of it and i really need to get that framed now so that's definitely a thing so when i get that put up in the house so i can like look at it and it'll remind me of um you know my creative endeavors and it's always a time thing you know for me like obviously having kids on my days off I don't really get to do anything for myself and um when um when they're in bed I'm knackered <laughs> I also want to read and the light's not very good to do art so so there's there's a time issue definitely but you know I do believe that if you really want to do something you can make time for it so yeah um I want to be more creative and yeah did I have any other goals I can't really remember um I guess just to try and like learn as much as I can, develop as much as I can, try and fulfill my objectives for why I'm here in the first place. Um, yeah, they're my sort of lifetime goals. <laughs> yeah, so anyhow, I feel like I'm turning into a little bit of a ramble now. But let me know um, what are your goals. Let me know if you've done a video about your goals, then link it because I'd love to watch. And I'll probably think of other goals as soon as I start editing this or watching other people's videos. Um, yeah, so um, anyhow, I wish you all a really, really happy, healthy, prosperous, abundant new year and next decade. And um, I still can't believe it's 20 years since the millennium, but there you go. And yeah, um, thank you for watching and thank you for supporting my channel and um, have a wonderful start to 2020. Bye!